All right, let's return to the corruption trial and the application by the former president uh, to have the state prosecutor advocate Billy Downer removed, arguing that he is biased and he won't be impartial. Let's discuss this now with Kelly Phelps, senior lecturer in criminal justice law at the University of Cape Town. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So if one looks at the Criminal Procedure Act, uh, there's an issue of what one can do plea on and it says an accused may plead that the prosecutor has no title to prosecute. That's an odd phrase, no title. What does it actually mean? Well, that's, that's the question of the hour, actually, what it means, in the sense that, as was pointed out in court today, this is a section of the Criminal Procedure Act that's really very seldomly argued. So what that means is that there isn't a lot of precedent of prior court cases which helps explain to us what, how, what meaning has been attached to that framework in the Act. There have been one or two other cases that have um, engaged from a tangential perspective about what could or could not be included under the concept of title to prosecute. We know that it means a, a prosecutor's standing or authority to prosecute, but a, subsequent, a, a prior case in 2015 actually was unclear whether it included things like irregularities in appointing the prosecutor, and the question of whether prosecutorial bias is covered by the section of the Criminal Procedure Act has not directly come before the courts yet. So that will be the big task for, for Judge Kuhn, really. We'll be answering that seemingly simple question of what is meant by a title to prosecute. That is really at the heart of this application. Jacob Zuma's team is saying um, Billy Downer has been involved um, in previously. Uh, he acted for the DA when the charges were initially dropped. They believe that he's, he's basically got a stake in this game and uh, that he's not going to be impartial. We know that judges have to be impartial. But when you're a state advocate, surely you're arguing the state's case. What are the rules around impartiality uh, for state prosecutors? Yes, well, formally a prosecutor is required to be impartial as they, um, as they swear to when they take their oath. However, what that means in practice doesn't look the same as what we expect of a judicial officer. So when we say that a prosecutor needs to pursue their case without fear, favor or prejudice, that means that they have to remain open to all different interpretations of the evidence they see. Having said that, the point at which a prosecutor has issued their discretion to prosecute and has chosen to pursue a matter, they can only do that once they believe that they have a reasonable prospect of success. If that weren't the case, if they didn't believe that at that stage, then it would essentially be a waste of taxpayers' money if they were pursuing cases that they felt were based on flimsy evidence. So the point at which any prosecutor has decided to pursue a matter to trial, the, the impartiality takes on a different meaning because at that stage they've applied their impartial mind to the evidence, but they are now convinced that there is at least a reasonable prospect of success and that the evidence needs to be ventilated in an open court process. That's very different to the kind of impartiality that we expect of a judicial officer. A judicial officer in our system is essentially like an impartial umpire, where they don't run the proceedings in terms of the arguments. They sit there and they receive the arguments from both sides and weigh all of the evidence up in its totality in order to reach a decision. But by the time a trial has started, the prosecutor already has a very firm view on how that evidence should be construed, or they wouldn't have chosen to pursue the matter. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the interesting thing, as you say, is that the judge is dealing with, with not a lot of precedent in law around uh, this uh, plea that a prosecutor has no title uh, to prosecute. So if the judge rules against Zuma's plea, uh, and by all accounts, the NPR already is saying this is absolutely frivolous, we've heard all this before. So let's say uh, they rule against Zuma's plea. Can he appeal? Because I think this is, uh, Tulisi Simulani, my colleague, was saying that this is also another area where it's not quite certain how you will appeal, to whom you appeal. 
So there are two cases uh, that were heard in the Supreme Court of Appeal in 2015 that were appeals based off Section 106.1H of the Criminal Procedure Act, which is the special plea section. So he can appeal. But one thing that's very important to remember about appeal is that the, the, the right to appeal is not guaranteed. You have a right to request an appeal, but they have to be solid grounds on which a court will grant you that appeal. So simply because he, in principle, has the prospect in law to launch an appeal doesn't mean that that will happen in this case. If the judge feels that there are no reasonable grounds on which a subsequent court would decide the matter differently to the manner in which he has decided it, then an appeal won't be granted. Right. Uh, but does that require stopping the entire process? Or could it be as simple as Judge Kuhn, let's say, for example, he decides there's no basis uh, and then there's a request for an appeal. Does that have to stop the main trial? Does everything grind to a halt? Or can the judge say very quickly, no appeal? Just, 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 just talk us through the ramifications there. So it's very difficult to answer those kinds of questions in the hypothetical because there are scenarios in which the trial could be halted or in which the judge could uh, could um, order that the matter be remitted to the end of the trial and should be considered in total with the eventual verdict of the trial. So it, it could happen either way depending on the specific circumstances at play, which we don't have a very clear view to yet because of course we've only today heard the basis of the argument of the special plea but the heads of argument haven't been tendered yet the full uh, record of evidence hasn't been argued yet so we don't yet know the full um, ambit of um, the evidence on which this claim is being made so it would be difficult to say now whether it would certainly hold proceedings but you can certainly say that there's a very big chance it could hold proceedings if however that that um, uh, leave for appeal is being requested on flimsy grounds then the subsequent courts um, who are being applied to in order to hear the appeal could dispense with it very swiftly indeed so it doesn't need to be a very lengthy delay if it does cause one well, thank you so much for clarifying what is a very uncertain area of law with not a lot of precedent. This plea that uh, former President Jacob Zuma uh, has argued that the prosecutor has no title to prosecute. It's going to be very interesting to see how that one plays out. Thank you so much. Kelly Phelps, Senior Lecturer in Criminal Justice Law at UCT.